Now we're going to look at the spine. Here we have a full field of view of the spine from the side on, sagittal view. And what we can see here is the cervical spine, the thoracic spine, and the lumbar spine. And now what we evaluate is first we look at the curvature, and this is a normal curvature in the cervical spine, a nice curve in the thoracic spine, and a nice curve in the lumbar spine. And then we look at the bones that make up the spine, called the vertebral bodies, which are the blocks right here. And in between each bone is the intervertebral disc, the cushion. And now the cushions should be brighter than the bone, as they are in this case. So, so far we see normal vertebral bodies and normal intervertebral discs and very normal looking spine. Then we look for any kind of signs of degenerative disc disease. And that's when the discs start to degenerate and bulge backwards. And that's where we can start to get neural impingement, either on the exiting nerves or on the spinal cord itself. Here we don't see any significant disc bulge and the spinal canal looks adequately patent. Then we also evaluate the spinal cord and here we see a normal signal spinal cord and normal caliber without any suspicious cord lesions. Now we're gonna look at a spine with degenerative change. We all develop degenerative change in our spine at some point in life. It typically depends on what the disc is doing to the spinal cord or nerve if we actually develop symptoms or not. If we look here in the cervical spine, we can see the spinal cord right here and the bright fluid surrounding the spinal cord. And then we can see at the C4-5 level, we have a shallow disc bulge going posteriorly, but the fluid is preserved between the spinal cord and the disc. So we know that there's no cord compression or any kind of neural impingement in this case. Then if we go down further in the lumbar spine, we can see that at the L2-3 level, we have disc height loss because there's a decreased space here. And there's actually slippage of the vertebral body with respect to the more inferior one. So L2 has slipped slightly forward with respect to the more inferior L3 one. And what that results in is narrowing of where the nerves exit the spine. So if I go out more lateral to the left side here, we can see that there is narrowing of the exit for the L2 nerve, but we don't see any compression of the nerve. So this would unlikely be a cause of any kind of neural symptoms or neural pain.